Do you struggle to find the resources you need at Vintage Story? Do you feel like you're just wasting your time digging aimlessly? Don't worry, I've got you covered. In this guide, I'll share some expert tips and tricks for prospecting like a pro. From understanding chunks and rock strata to using the pro pick and triangulating, you'll learn everything you need to know to find those elusive halite and iron deposits. So get ready to dig deep and strike it rich with this updated guide to prospecting in Vintage Story. So is finding halite and iron in Vintage Story really just a matter of luck? Yes, but luck is where opportunity and preparation meet. This video will help prepare you for success the next time you go mining in Vintage Story. In the game, the ore densities are created from a density map that is generated with the world. This density map creates very similar readings around a four block chunk, but will usually result in a center with a much higher reading. The ore field generated can span over a great many chunks, so finding a reading and testing around it should help identify the center and the size of the ore field. With each chunk being 32 blocks by 32 blocks, a four block ore field would be around 128 blocks wide. I want to talk about two main types of rock layers in Vintage Story, sedimentary and igneous. Some ores can only be found in certain rock types, so it's important to look at the host stone when looking at ores in the handbook. For example, you won't find tin in sandstone, neither on the surface nor in the strata. Understanding these rock layers can help with prospecting for resources in the game. These layers are formed from sediment that has been deposited over time. They're often found near bodies of water or in areas that were once covered in water. These are good layers for finding lead deposits in coal. These rock layers are formed from the cooling and solidification of magma or lava. Understanding these layers can help you locate resources such as copper, tin, and iron. Igneous rocks can also contain precious metals such as gold and silver. Don't worry, you don't need to memorize what rock types produce certain ores. Just point your cursor at the rock type, hold shift, and press H on your keyboard. The in-game handbook will open to that rock type and show you the ores that could be found in that particular stone type. The surface topography in the game can push ore deposits higher or flatten it out depending on what you see. A flat terrain will result in a flat ore disk and hilly terrain will result in the same size disk occurring over multiple elevations. Remember that as you dig out an ore node, if you're digging towards a hill or mountain, you'll have to dig up to find the rest of the ore. Using the pro pick is a point of contention among vintage story enthusiasts. Some see it as cheating while others view it as another level of immersion. I recognize the prospecting pick for what it is. a tool. That that prospectors have been using in real life to help collect rock samples for crushing and testing to determine what ores and in what density exist in an area. For a great example, go watch some videos by Dan Hurd on Dan Hurd Prospecting. Link to his channel is in the description. Density search is used to help narrow down your focus into chunks that have a higher chance of having the ore you're looking for. The results are a generalization of what the chunk can yield, not a probability, but an opportunity. Using core sampling is a great method to confirm if if what you have on those readings could be accurate. Since the reading is determined by the first block broken, I prefer that block to be near the center of the chunk. Then I test the next two blocks at four blocks from my position in two different directions. There's no need to test further than that. It won't provide better results. Node search is range based and specific. A reading with node search means that the or its reading is close, very close. A positive reading on node search means it's time to start triangulating to find the or deposit. In density search, you'll see words like ultra high, very high, high, decent, poor, very poor. Behind that is a number in parentheses. That represents parts per thousand. For the purpose of this video, we want to pay attention to the words first and the numbers second. Here is the method I've developed during my gameplay, and it works great. I took the original method Streetwise had laid out in a Reddit post. I put a link to that in the description. I have fine-tuned it to match my game style and to match my attention span. Pick a position where both directions are divisible by 40, such as X200 and Z400. Don't worry about the Y coordinate. Sample that location on density mode using the method I described earlier and look for the resource you want in the findings. Pick a direction and travel 200 blocks in that direction and test again at a point divisible by 40 and look for your resource. You want to find an area where the words decent, high, or ultra high show up for your resource in the result. When you find it, test one chunk in every direction to see if the percentage is rising or falling. 
following, but remember to consider the description first. Finding a poor reading of halide at 15% is not as good as finding decent reading at 11%. Once you've identified a chunk with decent or better, and that has the highest percentage in the area, go into the center of the chunk, change your pro pick mode to node search, and start digging down. Use ladders to keep from falling, or stand in the middle of two blocks and alternate digging between the two blocks. Every 20 blocks down, test with the pro pick node search and look for the ore deposit you're searching for in that chunk. Halite will not show in node search, but sylvite will. So if you see that, then you have halite close by. Once you've found a node reading for your resource, take a node search reading 10 blocks further down and see if the reading goes down or up. If it goes up, start digging lateral tunnels and testing every six to eight blocks. Keep going until the reading goes down. That means you've gotten close to the outer edge of the deposit. If it goes down, go 10 blocks above your first reading and test again. If it goes up or stays the same, start digging your lateral tunnels. If it goes down, then go back to your first reading and start your lateral tunnels. On your lateral tunnels, once you test every six to eight blocks, dig poke holes left and right and up and test on the fourth block to see where the larger reading is located. Anytime you find a lower reading, that means the deposit is in the opposite direction. Go back to the highest reading at the last set of poke holes and move in that direction away from the lower readings. For halite, always remember that the top of the deposit starts in the sedimentary layers and then it stretches all the way down to the mantle. If you want halite, travel down your core sample shaft until you reach the transition and then start digging lateral shafts in all four directions about 20 blocks. Test with node search and dig poke holes every six to eight blocks and remember to stay within that transition zone by keeping the sedimentary layer on the tunnel ceiling and the igneous layer on the floor. Halite deposits can be up to 12 by 12 in size. So if it's in that chunk, this method will find it. If you don't, then move on to another high chunk area and try again. If you find this guide is helping you, then please hit that like button so this video can spread to more people. Now let's go find halite and iron in our new world here. These searches can take some time to find high reading chunks, so this has been condensed for time. Searching in a straight line and testing on a routine will allow you to cover the most area and locate ore fields rather quickly without using a lot of tool durability. Final result, I had to test 63 chunks and travel over 2,000 blocks from spawn before I found the highest reading for halite. There may have been closer deposits, but taking the time to test every chunk and do core sampling would have used a lot of tool durability, time, and energy. For iron, I found it in the first chunk that I got a high reading, and the ore node was in the center of my vertical core sample shaft. Generally, that is the case, which is why core sampling works so well. Congratulations, you you made it to the end of my guide to prospecting and vintage story. I hope you found some valuable information that will help you on your journey to finding the resources you need. Remember, prospecting can take time and patience, but with the right tools and techniques, you can strike it rich. So take what you've learned here and go out there and dig deep. And if you found this video helpful, please hit that like button and share it with your fellow vintage story players. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.